Yes, everybody, welcome back to Talking Walls. We are here back with a match preview. Premier League football is finally back. Apologies, we had a little bit of a break over the international break. But here we are to talk about Wolves' trip to West Ham United this weekend. Uh, a game between two teams that are struggling, not scoring goals, needing a win. Um, and two managers that are sort of... I don't know. I mean, David Moyes, he's earned a lot of credit, I suppose, over the last couple of years. But Bruno Large really needs to try and turn things around sooner rather than later. Otherwise, pressure is certainly going to start mounting on him. As always, going to be giving my thoughts ahead of the game. Uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, opposition preview as well um, with Anton, who's a West Ham fan, later on in the video. But before we kick off, of course, with Premier League football back. Our betmate pots are back. Uh, so we've got one for the West Ham and Wolves game. So this one is a £500 guaranteed pot. Uh, to get involved, there is a link in the top of the description. Uh, new users, if you use the code TW5, you'll get a £5 bonus. This is my team on the screen, as you can see. Uh, if you haven't played the game before, it's a seven-a-side fantasy football game. You pick the players you think are going to perform best. Uh, during the match, I've gone with Saar in goal. Uh, back West Ham 2 of Kufal and uh, Kira. Uh, we've got Neves and Mateus Nunes in the middle with Jared Bowen and Mr. Diego Costa up front, which may well spoil uh, what I think my lineup would be for Saturday's game. As always, guys, a link to Betmate is in the top of the description. Uh, but it's been a couple of weeks. The dust has now settled after Wolves' uh, defeat at home to Manchester City. Seems like such a long time ago. Uh, from that game. We've had a little bit of time to settle down, rest, work on new things. A number of players obviously uh, have gone out uh, to international uh, international duty, but we've still got a lot of players now that have had more time to work with the squad, work with Bruno Large, and hopefully have a chance to uh, break into the team. Of course, one of those players was Boubacar Traore. We saw a little bit of him, a fairly impressive little cameo against Manchester City. He's not a player that I'm expecting to start on Saturday against West Ham United, but I think slowly and surely he's going to be integrated into that team, and I think he's going to be a vital part uh, of the squad throughout the rest of the season. Another vital player could well be Diego Costa. Now, with Raul Jimenez, we don't know the extent of his injury across the international break. Um, Mexican press sort of... If you weren't sure about what was going on, I think the Mexican press just confused it even more. But we still don't know when Raul Jimenez is going to be back, fit and available to play. So Diego Costa has been given this sort of break now of three, uh, three weeks or so to try and get himself up to fitness. And I've got a feeling he may well start against West Ham United. At the very, very least, I think he's going to be in the squad for the game. Um, let's look at my predicted lineup for this match. As you can see on the screen just here, um, we've gone with Jose Sarr in goal, a back four of Ryan Ait Nori, um, Kilman. Now, this is obviously another talking point as well. I've gone with Totti Gomez. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, right back of... I've gone with Nelson Tomato. Again, I could see easily see Johnny maybe coming in on that left-hand side as well. Midfield three, again, of Nunes, Martino and Ruben Neves. And a front three uh, of... I've gone with Pedence, Guedes and Diego Costa. Of course, Pedro Neto, for me, hasn't been phenomenal. Um, there's been lots of changes. We spoke about it a little bit on the last podcast. I wouldn't be against even chucking players like Adama Traore and giving them an opportunity just to mix it up a little bit. Um, but the big one is that obviously that centre back era, which I've not spot, uh, touched on just yet. Max Kilman is obviously going to start. The other position with Nathan Collins suspended for three games. Now Mosquera is a right footed centre back. He looked like he was going to come on against Manchester City before Ruben Neves slotted into that centre back spot. But I think for me, Bruno Large probably rates. Totti Gomez a little bit higher. So we could see Kilman slot onto the right hand side and Totti Gomez sit on the as a left centre back. Um, but it just depends on how precious Bruno is with that sort of left footed, right footed thing. It certainly depends on how they've trained. Can Totti or Kilman play on the right of a back four, uh, right on the, of the back two uh, comfortably? We don't know. But um, Wolves haven't delved into the free agent market. Jason Denier, who they were linked with as a free agent, has gone elsewhere now. Um, so it looks like we're going to be sticking with Totti Gomez and uh, yeah, Jason Mascara. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see what happens there. But we do have the West Ham perspective now. I spoke to Anton, uh, who gave his thoughts and gave us a little bit of an insight on this weekend's opponents. 
So then, guys, delighted to be alongside Anton from the West Ham Network. Anton, how are you keeping, man? Yeah, I'm good, Dave, mate. Um, very different this season compared to last season, but we're getting there. We'll get there. Yeah, good, good. Now, I'm happy uh, to have you back on the channel as well, Anton, um, for obviously West Ham United. Was, was it Irons United before? It was Irons United before, yeah, now, it's, now it's the West Ham Network. Network. Yeah, two channels yeah. joined forces and yeah. that's Fantastic, it. man. No, it's good to see you still going strong. West Ham United, though, Anton, it's been a weird, strange season, like you've already said, uh, for you guys so far. Uh, seven games in. Uh, I mean, we're not doing much better. We level uh, <laughs> a couple of points ahead of you, but we're seventeen. You're eighteen. Just the one win so far. I mean, talk to talk to me about this start so far for West Ham. Ah, uh, man, we've gone through such a whirlwind of emotions over the last two to three years. You know, nearly getting relegated and Moyes coming back in and keeping us up, and then going through. And I, and I'm not even joking here when I say what I'm about to say, but we've had two solid years. Like in my modern life of supporting West Ham, I've never seen a consistent year in year out performance from West Ham consistently playing well playing well yeah. getting the results and doing okay um and obviously getting to the semi-finals of the Europa League last year what an achievement for West Ham and and gutting that we couldn't get to the final at least and, and try and obviously go for the, the 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 win but what actually happened through being in the Europa League competition and, and going quite far was that actually we took a hit in the Premier League but we didn't take the hit Initially, when we first started the Premier League last year, our form has started to dip and had dipped from about January. So we actually haven't been in form for a lot longer than what a lot of fans have anticipated this year. So um, we did really well the first six months of last season, but the last part of last season, we didn't. And we were actually one of the worst performers in the league. So the unfortunate thing for us is that's continued into this season. and. It's not looking good so far, but there is belief there. Yeah. Obviously, with you being in Europe, you, you know, sometimes that can make life difficult. But obviously, you guys were in Europe again, you know, last season as well. So you'd think, you know, like you say, two good years. You can always, almost be used to it. You're up against uh, Anderlecht next week. We've got Fabio Silva, one of our one of our boys. I'm actually going to watch Anderlecht this weekend whilst Wolves are playing West Ham as well. So I'll have to give you a scout report before that game. Yeah, absolutely. Please um, do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but transfers uh, for West Ham spent a really good amount of money uh, this summer. Some top players, obviously, um, Paqueta coming in from Lyon, Gianluca Scamacca, who's quite well spoke about as well. Um, what's your thoughts on Scamacca? Obviously, for me, West Ham, obviously, you've had Mikel Antonio, but probably lacked sort of someone that you know and can rely on to score a good amount of goals. How has he, has he started off for you so far? Yeah, I mean, listen, I've, I've been buzzing about our transfer activity, um, but I've became aware of when you bring in so many bodies, you've got a time of, tra of transition of and you yeah. need to kind of go through that. So for me, Skamaka, um, he's an exciting forward. You know, if you ever watch him at, at Sassalou in Serie A, um, he is exciting. He's, Ita he's a Italy's number nine. Like you know, so he 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 knows what he's doing, and and people like him and favour him. And we've saw a little bit of him over the Nations League weekend week there. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't perform ninety minutes per game, but he had a couple of appearances. He looked all right. Um, I'm excited by him. I really am. What I will say about Skamaka is he's not got a season off and running yet, which is a little bit disappointing as a West Ham fan because that's a mixture of Moyes how he's managed Skamaka. Um, yeah. So he's not, he's only really started, I think, one or two games in the Premier League. And he then picked up a virus and was missing for a couple of games. And when he came back, he didn't look healthy, didn't look ready to be back, to be honest. So he, he was he was struggling. He was only really in second or third gear. However, mm -hmm. what we've saw laterally now is that he is get finding his fitness again and he looks ready to rock and roll. Now, the man has played and scored in three of his Europa Conference League games this year. So he's he's, he's often going in the Europa Conference League and he's getting starts in the Conference League, but he's not starting in the Premier League and he hasn't scored in the Premier League yet. But the difference between him and Antonio is he's a natural-born goal scorer, he's a natural-born striker, and he is a nuisance up top. He makes fantastic runs. He's in the right place at the right time. It's just about West Ham finding that click to feed yeah. that was something we've not had for such a long time relying heavily on Antonio of course yeah I've, I've and I'm sure some Wolves fans are probably the same as me now for a few years I've had like an agenda against Italian 
not just strikers, but players coming to the Premier League. I'm never 100 percent confident that they're going to do the business. Um, we had obviously Patrick Catrone, who was so well, you know, spoke about over in Italy, came to Wolves and was a load of rubbish, and you know, now <laughs> playing in the second tier of Italy. And it, it's interesting. Skamaka has obviously got a lot of hype about him. Still a very young striker, a lot of money, um, you know, behind him. There is something about him that I think, like you said, if he can click. He could become, you know, one of the best strikers in the league. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. And obviously, you mentioned him as well, David Moyes. Now, with such a poor start to the league already this season, I mean, there's definitely pressure on our manager, Bruno Large, but he's had a, a dreadful run of form, even, you know, going back into last season. Is there any pressure uh, for you or from the West Ham fans so far on David Moyes this season? I think it works in two ways, like yes and no. But really, yeah. if West Ham are to try and transition and continue to transition as a club, then to turn around and think about sacking Moyes would be a ridiculous statement. Um, mm -hmm. The situation is, though, that we have not had a good start and we now come into an October and busy November between the two months. And if he doesn't get results, we've put ourselves in that position. Therefore, does that mean if we keep getting our terrible run and we find ourselves in the bottom three come the winter... That, yeah. that, that, that the board have to look at that. I don't know. They've spoken out. They've not. It's not about the vote, vote the vote of confidence. But you know, the, the chat is that there's absolutely not a single ounce in their body that's willing to sack David Moyes. It's not a consideration. They, and I believe that. I don't think they're going to invest 100 and what 60, 70 million quid that we've invested under on the back of having fantastic, really, really good two seasons. Because if a club is to transition and try and make that move forward then you're going to have to bring in new players and to bring in new players you're going to need to give time to bed in for us to think that we will just hit that ground running would be ridiculous as fans so some of our fans get carried away with the position we're in but for me personally I believe in the project I really do yeah. I like everything that Moyes is doing there's a couple of decisions he makes that I'm a bit iffy about in terms of the youth and um, in terms of the, bringing these players through and in terms of giving some of these players starts rather than bringing them off the bench. Like borderline, there's hardly any of our new players starting the season. And yeah. that's the biggest concern with West Ham fans is we've played consecutively well for two seasons in a row with the same team. But eventually people will clock on to what that team is and what formation that is. And we'll start to get at West Ham rather than West Ham getting at them. Yeah, I think Wolves had that issue. You know, we had that under Nuno where, yes, we had a couple of great seasons, but sort of after season three, you looked at the team and thought, it's pretty much, you know, very similar to the same team we've had for the last two years. And I think mm. I think you, you're sort of right there. And in terms of lineup and formation, what's the sort of system that Moyes has been sort of starting and deploying so far this season? So the, the, the thing with the thing with Moyes is that sometimes we feel like he's a creature of habit. So, you know, we find that he can be reasonably predictable. He likes the kind of four two three one formation you know he's got the, the usually the four at the back he's got the two supporting central midfielders in the middle of the park he's got the three in behind the striker that's that's the kind of um formation he likes to do and every now and then switches it up and likes to play the wing backs with the five at the back um, yeah. and then the, the, the two in the middle again working your way up to the top so really right now as much as a creature of habit we are going through that transition and 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 what has been the output from West Ham hasn't been great and Moyes himself has been speaking about performances and individual players. So we as fans are fully expecting changes to be made, fully expecting it with yeah. the intention that, it, that changes will be made for the game against Wolves. So we anticipate not really knowing, if I'm being brutally honest, the starting a living because I did a video on our channel earlier on and, and we could be talking about people are requesting seven changes but those wow. seven changes are not player changes they're a mixture of players formation and moving players into different positions now there are a couple of positions up for grabs in my opinion and they need to be made and i think Moyes could look at making up to two or three big decisions for this wolves game which then in hindsight west ham don't really know what we're going to put, put out against you mm. against you lot yeah, yeah. And I think Wolves are possibly the same. You know, Bruno Lage is at coming up to two weeks now with, you know, a set amount of players. Obviously, a couple of players have been out on international duty as well. So, I, you know, Wolves fans are really intrigued to see how we'll line up. And talk about Wolves, Anton. Is there anyone from our squad currently that, that worries you going into the game this weekend? To be honest, I, I know you've signed. Uh, the, the biggest concern I've got is players that aren't on form. Yeah, who then like to step up against West Ham or a yeah. player that's gone kind of missing 
by the Hayside mm -hmm. and a player you've brought back from nothing, i.e. Diego Costa. And, yeah. uh, you know, you've brought, you've brought him in and he concerns me because, you know, he's going to want to hit the ground running. Um, he's going to want to prove to the Wolves fans and to, to everyone in the world that I can still do it. We all know he's got a bit of grit and determination. So I'm a bit fearful of the fact that whether or not he would start and if he would start, what kind of problems would he cause our defence? Obviously, I know Jimenez has not been on a huge amount of form recently, but we know he likes a goal against West Ham and we know we can step up to the plate when asked. Um, and, and like yeah. you said, it's a bit clicking. So really the, the forward line, and I know you're lacking in goals, but that's maybe the extra drive that they need to get yeah. the goals. So there, yeah. there's my fear. Yeah, Jimenez, I'm still... I mean, it's been so grey about whether, you know, he's fit or not. There's been a lot of reports. Obviously, he went to to do rehab and sort of recovery with the Mexico national team. I don't think he'll be part of the squad. Diego Costa, though, I'll be very, very surprised if he's not at least in the squad. Yeah. He, he, might, he might even start. It would be his debut, I think. And he might start uh, at West Ham. He's had a few weeks to try and get fit now. Um, so, yeah, it'll, it'd be interesting. Fingers crossed. Anton, if I have to trouble you for a score prediction ahead of the game, what are you thinking? <laughs> Listen, it's like a must win for both the teams. There's no ifs or buts about Correct. it. Must win in terms of, you know, it's, I know it's early in the season to do it, but you need momentum going into this mm -hmm. October break. Um, yeah. For me, it really depends on what, and I'm not being in this in a detrimental face to, to Wolves, but it, to me, it's, it's we're at home and we've got the players there to make us click. We've got little glimpses of hope and, and positivity in our performances. You know, we were unfortunate against Chelsea. We should have walked away minimum with a point against yeah. Chelsea. And then we wouldn't have, we would have been in an unbeaten run of five games. It's just results have been a draw and then a win in the conference and then a draw and then a win in the conference and then losing the goal to VAR from Chelsea. So there are glimpses of hope at the West Ham thing. And I think if Moyes makes a few changes, I would be confident we could win the game but not convincingly, because we will concede. I have no doubts about that. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 West Ham victory. There we go, guys. Uh, I'll be sure to leave Anton's channel, the West Ham Network, in the description down below. We're going to be doing a match preview over on his channel as well. So be sure to check that one out. And Anton, once again, thank you for jumping on Talking Walls. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Take it easy. So a big thanks to Anton. You can find a link to his channel in the description. We did a little ma match preview over there as well, if you want to check that one out. Uh, guys, let me know your thoughts and score predictions in the comment section down below. I think my heart is saying a 2-1 Wolves win. My head is probably saying a 1-1 or even a 0-0. Wolves have got to pull their finger out, got to start scoring goals. Otherwise, like I said, the head coach, Bruno Lage, is under a lot of pressure. Uh, me and Matt are going to be in Belgium. We're going to be watching Fabio Silva and Anderlecht this weekend, but we'll be sure to catch the game. So we'll have our thoughts after the match. We'll have the fans react, hopefully, out uh, sometime over the weekend as well. But as always, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, guys. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you all very, very soon.